Hello, my name's Pete and I'm a tutor with Practice Tests Academy. Today we're going to be having a look at how to balance work, life and studying. Now, many SEMA students have got a demanding role at work. You're quite often at a stage in your career where you need to be putting the hours in. And unfortunately, quite often in life, that coincides with having a demanding family life as well. Uh, you may have young children, for example, at home. On top of all that, you're trying to study. Uh, quite often, SEMA students get very little, if any, study leave to enable them to work during the working day on their studies, uh, meaning that they have to study in their own time. There are only 24 hours in a day, and unfortunately, those things, those sums sometimes don't add up. So we're going to have a look at three things here. Firstly, we're going to have a, have a look at whether or not you should be studying right now or whether or not you should consider studying at a later date. We're then going to consider whether or not, um, if you are studying, you have enough time, and if not, um, how we're going to create that time, and then how to use that time. So we're going to start off by looking at the big picture uh, and thinking about your life's mission, because we tend to fill our days doing things um, without quite understanding the big picture in the long term as to why. Most people don't have a mission in life that they've thought about but it's odd because most companies do and companies do it for a very good reason it means they know what they're aiming for it's exactly the same for us so there's a couple of exercises that you can think about here first of all imagine that you are a guest at your own retirement party think about who's going to stand up and say something at your retirement party and think for a minute about what you'd like them to say about your career then work backwards and think, am I doing the right kinds of things to enable that person to be able to say that kind of thing about my career later on in life? Another one you can try, it's quite sobering but very instructive, is to imagine that you're a guest at your own funeral. And think about who you would like to stand up at your funeral and what you'd like them to say about your life and what you've achieved. And then again, you can work backwards and think, what am I actually doing to enable that person or that type of person to be able to say those things by the time I get to the other end of my life? And that can just give you a little bit of focus, to be honest. We're going to talk now about rocks and sand. Uh, is it quite an old analogy this one but using a bucket a bucket has only so much space inside it and there's only so much time rocks are the important things in life these are the things that might have come through from thinking about our mission and ultimately what matters to us sand is the day-to-day -day things like shopping cooking cleaning washing ironing those kinds of things and we tend to pour in the sand into our bucket of time first and fill it up with those day-to-day -day bits and pieces and then we might have a bit of time left over for the rocks. We put one or two rocks in, but we may, maybe can't get them all in. Um, so we end up with some rocks left out. In other words, some of the important things in life don't get done. So what we're going to do is tip out that sand and those rocks and start off by putting the rocks in first. Think what's most important and we're going to focus our attention on doing those things first. Then we'll pour in sand on top of those rocks and fill in the gaps around them with the stuff that needs to be done every day. And we might well, because the sand fits around the rocks, we might well be able to do both completely. Chances are, however, there'll be some sand left over. At the end of the day, it's a bit of sand. It doesn't matter. It's just the day-to-day -day stuff that doesn't really matter. At least we're not leaving rocks out of the equation. So you might need to think fundamentally, have I got enough space in my bucket at the moment for this particular rock being study? Um, and you may decide that you need to take a break from study um, for six months, maybe, or a year, maybe. But commit to when you're going to go back to it, if that's the case. Now, assuming we are committed to carry on with our studies, let's think about how we create time in our diary um, for those studies. The most important thing is to not see study time as optional. It's not sand, it's a rock. So you need to put time into your diary and commit to it. See it as inflexible, just like you would do another meeting. Most people um, need to... Um, be convinced to have to move a meeting or cancel it, um, they're normally committed to it once they're committed to meeting somebody else. This is exactly the same. Study time is a commitment that you need to stick to. And you can 
employ a friendly policeman to help you ensure that you stick to those scheduled study times at work or at home or both i used to have one at work my line manager and one at home my partner and they both used to check that i was sticking to what was in my diary for study time it's actually particularly useful to get your boss involved in this kind of thing because they can then see what else is going on in your life and they may not appreciate when they're putting work pressure on you just how much other stuff is going on so it, it can help from that perspective as well you should pace yourself when you're putting time in your diary. Don't leave big blocks of time where you don't study at all and then cram at the end because you end up giving a, yourself a break from study so you sort of switch off from it. Then you come back to it and expect yourself to switch back onto it and, and, and study really quickly in a short space of time. It just doesn't work very well. You're best off doing uh, little and often and at your best time of day as well. So some people are morning people. I know students who get up an hour earlier to do an hour study before they go to work. That's fine if you're a morning person. Some people can't wake up that quickly though in the morning and you might be a night owl. In which case, put the time in your diary for the evening but put it in your diary nonetheless. You may need to compartmentalise your life and change the structure of your life a little bit to create time. For example, you may be used to um, going to the gym whenever you feel like it, doing the food shopping whenever you feel like it, Putting a bit of order on these things and saying, right, Tuesday night is a gym night means that there isn't pressure in, on other days to consider doing those things. Working smarter, sacred habits. Um, we may, for example, um, every single day on the way home, call in at the supermarket to buy something for tea. And that swallows time out of every single day. And we do, do it just because it's a habit that we don't question. We just do it because uh, that's what we've always done. Things like that can swallow a lot of time and can actually be a source of an awful lot of time if you rethink them. So, you know, there's a silly example there. Just go shopping once a week instead of every day. But there are lots of things we do throughout the day that we just do them because we always have done. Think about those things and cut down on them. In my experience, lots of SEMA students um, are very accommodating and say yes to lots of requests and then try and deliver to perfection. Those two things put an awful lot of pressure on you and you've got enough pressure on you at the moment in life. So you need to work out which bits you're going to say yes to and to be honest, which bits you're going to say no to. And just appreciate that person you're saying no to, you're probably doing them a favour because if you're saying no to them, it's because you don't have time to do it properly. Not everything needs to be done perfectly. For a lot of tasks, good enough is good enough. And think about that before you start doing anything. How good does, does this have to be? Not everything has to be perfect. So let go of perfectionism. Um, there are things that we do, um, like checking our emails and checking our text messages and looking at Facebook and other social media. And people that quite often that we speak to for, a, it's good to have a chat, but maybe for hours at a time, we need to work out where our time is going on those things and try and limit them. I'm not saying stop them entirely, but limit them from taking too much time out your day. Learn how to accept and ask for help as well. We might think we're inconveniencing other people by asking them for help and support. But if you think when someone asks you for help, you see it as a compliment and it's and you want to help that person out. You want to support the people you care about. It's exactly the same, just the other way around. So there's nothing wrong with accepting help. Speak to your boss as well about whether or not you can have some working from home time and that at least saves your commute you might commute half an hour either either direction um, when you go to work each day there's an hour right there of study time that you've created by working from home often as well working from home occasionally um, concentrates you because uh, there's less distractions at home hopefully uh, and you can get more work done um, that way um, and again, create time for studying. Remember, tools like video conferencing can mean that you're in the office even when you're not actually there. So you've created some time. Let's think about what you're actually going to do in a study session now. The first thing is not to work for too long. Um, bursts, I think, of about 50 minutes are, are about right for most people. When you've done 50 minutes, you don't feel tired, but you are starting to get tired. So even though you feel like you could go longer, 
stop after 50 minutes and take a micro break, do some exercise, stand up, walk out the room, go and speak to someone, go and stand outside for five minutes or whatever it might be, but do not sit at your computer reading emails or sit on your phone um, reading uh, text messages and so on. Get up and move around. Focus on question practice as well. Uh, sitting and learning a file is hard work and it's a very passive activity reading. Question practice is much more active. So if you have a go to question, can't do it, you dip into your notes, you will then remember that much better than if you just sat trying to learn it in the first place from a file. So focus your time on question practice will make your study time much more efficient and effective. Give yourself vol volume related targets as well. If you say to yourself, I'm going to sit down and study for an hour, an awful lot of people will then slow down to fill that hour up, maybe even subconsciously, but or start off by tidying up their desk or getting a drink or something like that. Whereas if you say to yourself, I am going to do 20 questions, then I have a break. It's amazing how that focuses the mind. A little one this, but when you're um, doing questions out of a question bank, don't write the answers on the actual question bank. Write them on a separate sheet and keep a record of them because then you'll see which ones you've done wrong. And you can go back to them and focus on the ones you, you got wrong last time. Build little tests for yourself later on in your studies to make your later study time that bit more efficient and effective. Equally, by not writing your workings and things actually on the question bank means is when you have another go at those questions later on, you've got a clean sheet in front of you rather than old workings um, that are giving you prompts or maybe dragging you off in the wrong direction. Your workspace needs to be dedicated to study, away from distractions and plain and calm as best as it can be. Um, it should be a, an empty desk apart from the stuff that you're using to study. Um, it should be quiet and calm. Now, it may be at home or it may not be. It could be in a meeting room at work. Maybe you book a regular slot in a meeting room before or after working hours for an hour. Uh, maybe you call in at a library on the way home and do an hour then. Or it could be a room at home. But if it, if it, is, if it is a room at home, don't make it in front of the television. Don't make it at the dinner table with other people sitting around you eating. Uh, make it um, personal private time that's off somewhere and quiet. And keep that desk clear and particularly clear of things like mobile phones um, because they will distract you. And it's not just the time it takes reading um, text messages and so on. It's the fact your brain is constantly flitting from study to doing other things it makes study time much less effective. Now, it's hard work studying and working at the same time. I do sympathise with that and we need to maintain motivation over the study period. I used to find it useful to visualise how life will be different as a result of qualifying. Take it, take it from me, I qualified well over 20 years ago now and my career has was transformed by doing my exams. It was three years hard work and it was hard work but I, I'm benefiting from those exams right from uh, the, the day I pass them right to today and all the way up until the day I retire. It is a life changing thing that you're doing. And just remember that. Keep an eye on the big picture. Think uh, that there are there are other things in life. So don't lose sense of your other priorities. Remind yourself of those priorities, those things that you came up with in your life mission as well. But keep an eye on the big picture when it comes to your exams. I used to keep a sheet of paper on the wall that had my first exam at the bottom and the last one at the top. And I'd cross them off as I went, building up the page so I could see how much progress was being made um, every single exam that I passed. Remember as well to celebrate and celebrate regularly. I used to look forward to my results day and have a treat um, lined up for when those results came out. Whatever you do, don't just let that pass that moment pass without celebrating it. Bask in the sunshine for a moment there before you leap into your next exam. Give yourself the reward for a job well done. Just finally, keep exercising. Fresh air and exercise keeps the blood pumping, keeps the brain in good working order. Be realistic with the amount you can do. If you try and put too much into your diary, you will fall short and feel bad about it and or not do a great job. So be realistic. Keep smiling as best you can. Remember that 
remember that big picture and what's important in life. And lastly, I want you to make time to sharpen the saw. What this means, imagine you're sawing trees down uh, and you've got so many trees to saw down that you say to yourself, I haven't got time to stop and sharpen my saw. That means that you keep trying to saw tree downs with an increasingly blunt saw. It takes longer and longer and longer. If you took half an hour out to sharpen that saw, you would then end up cutting more trees down overall. It's exactly the same in life. Make sure you build in break time into your study schedule because that gets your energy levels back up and makes your study time all that much more efficient and effective. I hope you found at least something useful in there. All the very best with your studies and thanks very much for listening.